Welcome back to Little and Rose. My name is Summer Noel, and today we're going to do a really fun cup. Uh, we're going to be doing a storyboard cup, and we're going to be using thermochromatic powders. So first of all, make sure you have a good storyboard cup. And if you don't have thermochromatic powders, you can have a you can order it on our website. It's kind of hard to find this powder. Um, I'll have a link in the menu below um, in the description so that you can find it. We were going to have it in a couple different colors. Um, so there you go. Pretty easy. Uh, you want to make sure you have your PPE gear ready, which is your nitrile gloves and your chemical respirator, because we are going to be working with epoxy. Um, so let's just jump right in. Okay, so the first basic step you're gonna to wanna to do is take your tumbler apart. You're gonna to wanna to remove the bottom, set that aside, and remove the plastic and set that aside as well. We're gonna start with working with just the base. There are different types of storyboards, um, but they all generally look about like this. Um, so if you have a different style, just kind of alter this to kind of be a little bit more with what is working with your cup. Um, you can also buy these on our shop. We have these in our online store. And so if you don't know where to find them, that's where you can find them. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna, we're gonna end up ultimately first painting this to tumbler. So we're gonna tape off the top section, this top rim and the threads because we don't want those to get um, painted. All right, so now that we have the top taped off and the bottom taped off, we're gonna go ahead and sand this down just a little bit and with just a actually I'm going to put on my respirator because I do not want to get any of this um, in my lungs and we're going to just gently dust the surface. Okay, I've got my little dust mask on. We're just going to just gently scratch the surface. We don't have to do anything major. We don't want these scratches really showing through the paint, uh, but that's just so that the paint can grab real well. All right, there is perfect. You can see I've gone all the way around. Now I'm gonna actually rinse this off with Dawn soap and water and we are gonna let it thoroughly dry and then we'll be back. All right, now, so it's all dry. We had it, uh, we washed it off and let it sit in front of a fan for a couple hours so that you know it's very, very dry. I made sure I spun it a couple times to make sure it's super dry. And we are gonna take this outside and spray it white. Okay guys, here comes the tricky part. Um, we're gonna do a really cool pirate cup and we have a very minimal amount of space between where the plastic and the cup are. Um, so I have measured, I've got my pirate ship that I've got going on and my cool pirate things that I got going on. And I know it's gonna be about two and a half inches and I don't want them to come all the way to the top. So I have measured down with my little measuring tape, of course, right here. So I've measured down right at just under three inches and I've made an almost invisible mark. Now I'm gonna turn the cup around. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and we're gonna to attempt to do our stormy seas to that point, that tiny, tiny little mark that's almost invisible and as thin of coat as possible because we can't get too much epoxy down there otherwise we won't be able to get our sleeve over the top. So it has to be so, so minimal. All right, guys, here we go. Okay, so I lied. We're going to do the smoke part first, and then we're going to do the smoke, uh, the stormy seas. Yeah, that's what we're going to do, because I've got my spoon already. I've got my candle ready. Oh, this is going to be a cool cup. Um, my nanny's already claimed it, and she hasn't even seen it. She's just like, I want this cup, because I was telling her the concept for it. She's super excited. Um, sorry about my hair. It's going crazy pants. All right, let's do the smoke. Here we go, guys. All right, you guys get to see my super messy workspace. I don't normally show you this, so this is a little sneak peek of all the chaos around me. Uh, we're gonna get our, we're gonna use our torch to just go ahead and get our flame started. It's a nice, beautiful scent. Um, we're gonna hold our cup. We're gonna get our silver burning. And we're gonna hold our cup. I'm in a super well ventilated area. Keep that in mind. Ooh. 
So you can see we're already starting to get some really cool smoke off of that. This is just on flat, matte white spray paint. Keep that in mind. You want to use a spoon that is made of silver. I've always had collections of these because I make the rings out of the, um, I make rings out of the, uh, whenever I find these at thrift stores, I grab them because I can make rings out of the handles. And they're really cool. Ooh, this is looking really good. I decided I didn't want to do this after the epoxy because I don't want to heat the epoxy up with the, the flame. I was going to do it after. And I just realized I should change my mind on that. That's why we're running through this real quick. With the smoke. All right, I think that's going to be perfect. There we go, guys. And it's just as easy as that to make a smoke tumbler. So that's your little smoke tumbler tutorial from me. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do these stormy seas. Down on this small little section, I can still see my little tiny marks. Very, very subtle marks. And we're going to jump right into that. Hey guys, in my previous tutorial uh, for the shipwrap and shipwreck, you saw me use acrylic paint. Uh, we don't. I'm not going to use that in this one. We're going to use just alcohol inks. Uh, mainly because I don't want this to be any thicker than it can needs to be. It needs to be as thin as possible. So we're not going to go too overboard. We're just going to kind of make a fun little stormy sea down there just to accentuate and go with all of our other little details that are going to be inside this cup. Uh, but we can't make it too thick uh, because we still have to go over it with the thermochromatic powders and we got to be very careful with how thick this layer goes on. So we're going to go ahead and get this stirred up. As you can see, I'm using very, very little epoxy. I'm probably going to have extra left over. And we'll use it to do another cup, a different, uh, maybe a hang method on another cup. So we'll be right back after I get this stirred. All right, guys, I got you down in the action. We are ready to go. We have our epoxy mixed. I've got my nitrile gloves on, my chemical respirator on. What we are going to do is go ahead and start and just drizzle on some of the clear into that little area below the point in which we want it. Not a heavy coat. Again, remember, we want less is more. Less is more because we want to be able to put that plastic in and we still have to do our thermal powders. This is just to get a fun little stormy sea going on for a pirate ship. So now I'm going to kind of take my finger and make sure it's well coated. This is just to kind of give it a nice slippery surface. Get it started. We're not even worrying about the smoky up on top. We're just doing this here on the bottom, okay? It's almost like the hang method, just along this bottom bit. We're not going to be using the heat gun. We don't even want enough epoxy to get it moving. We are going to use toothpicks to make our stormy sea. So that's probably something a little different than what you guys are used to seeing. Okay. So now I'm going to divide into my cups. And do a little bit of the black. And a little bit of the white and then we're going to have one in the middle that'll be the gray okay so we're going to do a drip of the black you probably will not be using all this epoxy we're going to do the black actually we need three drops i'm going to do one drop for the gray
two drops of the white, three, lots of drops for the white. We want that nice and pigmented. And then some white. Okay, we're going to get this all stirred up. A little variation that you could do here is add um, a little silver uh, epoxy, a little bit of silver uh, epoxy um, uh, additive to add a little shimmer if you want. All right, so we're going to just stick with this. Okay, so now we've got that. We're going to actually start with adding the gray. So the white and the black will be at the end. We are going to start with the gray. Sorry, we had a little fuzzy on there. I'm going to put the gray and just going to dribble in through the middle. Very, very little. A little bit of glitter there. Came off my stir stick, I guess. You can already even see without me even using heat, the gray is already starting to make some movement. A little bit down low, a little bit down high. But painting the canvas, guys, and it's, there's no method to the madness other than we're just using very, very little. Okay, so now I'm gonna leave that off. Now we're gonna come in. We're going to do the same thing with the black, but we're going to add very, very little. Remember, the darker colors take over very, very quickly. And I want most of the black to be at the bottom because it's going to be like the black smoky sea is coming up from the bottom. Blend a little up to see so you have a little texture coming all the way up the cup. Not a lot, because like I said, it does it does really take over very fast. Okay. I'm just cleaning my uh, tool off, my uh, silicone tool off on the baby wipe off the side of the camera here. Put a little white in there. You know the cup is already white. But this just adds texture inside. It adds kind of like the uh, crashing waves. But we, again, want more of the dark. We're going for stormy seas, so we want more for the dark. So now we're just going to let it sit and kind of roll. I'm going to let you guys sit on high speed for just a few minutes. See how we go. Okay, so now we don't want it to just get a spiral to it. So we're going to actually going to set it up on its end like this. Uh, oops, let's see if we can pull the camera back. We're going to actually set it up on end like this and let it sit for a few minutes like this as well. And then we'll also tilt it the other way. We're going to let the water just kind of go up and down and let it start blending back and forth. Okay, so now instead of using the heat gun or 
tipping it or anything, I'm going to start kind of making some little designs with a toothpick um, because I don't want to add any more epoxy. I don't want to make this any thicker. Um, and I just want to kind of keep playing with this idea of what we've got going on here. And we're just going to kind of swirl it down in. And place, I'm just, this is me just being kind of OCD and playing with it. I might add a little bit more white along the ridges to add a little bit more white wash. This is already looking just super cool, so I don't want to play with it too much. Like I said, you've got to be real careful about getting too thick. All right, so we're just going to kind of let it do its thing overnight. We'll come back and see how it looks. And we'll start adding our decals. All right, guys, see you soon. All right, guys, here's the fun part. We're going to add our water slide. Um, we're going to take this. Um, it has been, this is on inkjet uh, paper, and we have clear coat sealed it and then trimmed it out um, from the paper. We're going to drop it down in there. We know that it curls. It's fine. Just let it curl. Um, it's just been clear coat sprayed uh, with spray paint, clear finish spray paint. Um, doesn't really matter. Uh, I tend to use matte, but it looks like the, uh, my little assistant used glossy on this one, but it really doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to just show you a couple little tips and tricks on how to do this. We're going to let it soak under the water here for hmm, 60 to 90 seconds. Um, this one I'm going to do laying it on its back and sliding the paper out from behind it. Um, and the sh ship, I'm going to show you how to put it face down and slide it out that way. Um, there is multiple techniques. Uh, with our water slide paper, you can do it either way. Um, because we're putting it under epoxy, it doesn't matter if the adhesion adhesive is on one side or the other. Um, so there's been a lot of argument out there about like X, Y, and Z and how you should do it, but this is how I roll. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put the dead man tail no tails, and we're going to slide this out just a tiny bit. Then I'm going to hold with my thumb, or I'm sorry, my forefinger, and I'm going to slide it out. Sometimes I use tweezers to do this part and get it out from behind there. Then I'm going to take a silicone brush, and I am going to work out the bubbles and smooth out my water slide here. Oop, I'm gonna move this guy so he doesn't get wet yet. Position him how I want him. I do not add water to the surface before I add my water slide. Some people do, some people don't. Um, I, I just choose not to. The water, slide the water, get the bubbles out very gently with the epoxy brush. You don't want you don't want any bubbles and you don't want any moisture left under or behind uh, your decal because that will mess up um, your cup. It will look like it will actually look like milky uh, if you uh, add epoxy before any of the water has dried. So there we go. We got a nice. That looks perfect. So we're going to let that go. We'll be right back. We're going to let it dry just a little bit and we'll flip it over and do the other side. All right. Now this one we're going to do lay it face down um, on the cup. Um, when you put your uh, water slide into the water, it may curl up a little bit. Don't try to fuss with it. Just let it curl. All I do is I put a little bit of pressure. You can see I've got only about an inch of water in here. I put a little bit of pressure on the back of the uh, water slide paper to keep it from really curling up. Um, you don't want to mess with it too much because that's when you can get a lot of cracking in your image. Um, the curling is natural. Uh, when you lay the epoxy, I mean, when you lay the water slide down over the surface that you want it on, it will go flat. So you don't worry too much about it going curling. Like I said, the more you fuss with it, the more likely it is to start cracking and damage your image. So we're just going to let this guy sit. You can see the beautiful, um, uh, 
dimpling and all the different, uh, just the, the design within this epoxy is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm really loving it. And this, this uh, boat is gonna lay over it beautifully. Let's see if he's ready to go, and he is. So this one, what I'm gonna do with this one is I am gonna lay him down, face down. I kinda wanna get him in there, and we're gonna lay him face down, press nice and firm, and slide and release. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this one is we're gonna use our epoxy, our silicone brush and just gently make sure there's no mo uh, water or moisture behind the decal. I will probably now lay this in front of a fan for a couple hours to really make sure that there's no fluid um, anywhere in or on, near or anywhere around on my image. And we are then going to go ahead to the next step. It's going to be a fun one. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. All right, guys, let's rock and roll. We've got our part A and part B epoxy mixed already together. We put uh, two pretty sizable scoops of the thermochromatic powder. Um, it looks gray now, but as you see, when we mix it into our epoxy, um, it's going to turn really dark black. It's going to be super cool. So I kind of overdid it on the powder. We want, like I said, because we want to do a very thin coat so that it does not mess up. Um, it does not mess up where the contact of the plastic part of the storyboard comes in contact with it. So we wanted it to be a very dense black. Uh, so that's why I added so much black because we're doing such a thin coat um, that we needed a lot of pigment inside there. So this is like I said, we added a little bit more than we normally do uh, to a coat like this, but there is a purpose. Now, I'm going to go ahead and apply this uh, with my finger so we don't tear the um, we don't tear the water slide and so that we can get a nice thin layer. Oh, look at that. We even got a little thermal powder on the cup itself. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to jump right and you can see how just absolutely black that is. Put that over on a little cup there. So our goal is to actually hide all of this underneath this layer of epoxy. And to make this actually look like a black cup. We may have to mix a little bit more epoxy. This is really thick epoxy. Um, I decided to work with artworks today, mainly because I had just a tiny bit left from when I sampled it, and I thought, got to get rid of it, might as well. And it's a very, very thick epoxy. I don't have to focus on the bottom as much. Just make sure that it's blended uh, because the bottom, most of the very bottom is actually already black. So we are gonna really, once we start doing coverage, we're really just gonna be focusing on getting coverage over this top part. But again, like I said, we have to be very careful to not get too thick or our uh, plastic coating, our plastic cover will not fit. going to stop and make just a touch more epoxy to make sure it is thoroughly coated and, and I want to make sure that that black is all the way across the top here and we need just a little bit more for coverage here it 
It doesn't need to be exactly perfect because we're going to put some stuff inside the liquid. Um, for fun, I can't, I'm not going to reveal that part yet. Um, but that will also detract from the pattern of the epoxy. Let's see, I have a little bit more epoxy off to the side here. So I'm just going to scoop a little bit more black pigment in there. Make a second batch. We should not need more than the second batch. This is already pre-prepped. I had it separated off to the side for a second project, uh, but this one needs a little bit more, so we're gonna go ahead and use it. it up here. Okay. Put that off to the side. Go ahead and add just a little bit more over those patterns. I don't want it too thick. If you get the thermochromatic powder um, layer actually too thick with epoxy, um, it won't go completely clear. So that's also what I'm a little concerned about. We've got to find that happy medium um, is where it's going to still change to absolutely clear, but without being too thick. I'm not worried about the edge of the cup, guys. Remember, I have this taped off. All right. We're going to leave it at that. I've actually got a project I'm going to let use this last little bit of thermochromatic for. It's actually kind of fun. You can see where my thumbprint was touching the thermochromatic. It turned white. Just from the heat of my thumb inside the glove has changed it. Now you're going to actually see this. Um, I'm going to pop the bubbles. So now you're going to kind of see uh, what this cup does and what the thermochromatic powder does as I pop these bubbles. So what's going to be fun about this cup is it's meant to be a coffee cup. Um, so when somebody pours their coffee in it, um, it's going to do this. revealing that really cool pattern. And then as it cools back down, it goes back to being a black cup. You want to make sure to get all those micro bubbles out because they will, in fact, mess with the image. So we will probably babysit this cup a little bit today. Um, I will probably come back and work with the micro bubbles because micro bubbles can come back um, over time. As you can see, there's some still hanging out, lingering. Uh, micro bubbles will come back. Um, so I will probably um, hit it for micro bubbles a couple times in the next hour or so to make sure that there's none still kind of hanging out over that image. But the smoky skies, and then you can see the minute I stop torching it, because it's now cooling down, because it's cooler in this room, it starts going back to the, the gray. It's really, really fun. 
So uh, this is on our website. We will have it linked because it is actually a little difficult to find this stuff. Um, so we will have it linked on our, uh, in the description below on, from our website. Uh, we carry it in a couple different colors. Um, so if you have, uh, this is just meant to inspire you guys. Uh, you can do peekaboos and all kinds of things with your fun cups. Uh, but like I said, you want to have it um, right up against the heat source. So um, like this, the, the coffee will go right inside here. Um, and the, the second double walled part is the actual plastic part. Um, so this is going to actually be touching where the hot coffee goes. So that will reveal this really cool uh, image behind it with the stormy seas and our uh, Pirates of the Caribbean boat there. So this is a really fun one. All right, guys. We will just let this turn for a couple hours. I'm going to babysit it with the micro bubbles, and we'll be back. All right, so now we're here. We are. The cup is um, totally adhered at the top. It's got a nice good seal on it, and we are going to now start to fill it up. Um, because pirates are known for looking for gold, we're going to use Helios. Um, Helios is part of our gold collection. He's our metallic gold. He's gorgeous. Um, we also have Atreyu, um, Ivan, and if you want more champagne gold, you can go with Bosley. We have all different types of golds on our website um, that would look gorgeous or fun. or And you can do whatever color you want. You could do red. You could do anything you want. Um, so usually it takes about three of those small medicine cups to fill this guy. But I'm going to just go ahead and put some water in here. I'm not going to worry about it because I have... Um, a little water syringy thing that I can suck water out if I need to, uh, to fill it, to, um, remove water. I'm not going to worry about portion portions at this point, but like I said, in general, um, these, uh, storyboards take about three of those little medicine cups, but there are multiple different styles of storyboards. So that could be a give and take as well. So what I have is it's, it's just something that looks like a baser. So if I pour too much in there and it looks like it doesn't have enough glitter, I can tap more glitter um, and keep on adding from there. Um, let's see, I need a stir stick. I want a good, nice long one. All right, so we got that. Let's go ahead and add our glitter. I like a lot of glitter. And I know a lot of this glitter will ultimately get stuck to the side of this cup and not really make it in. Like this cup, it'll get stuck there. Um, and we're gonna stir that right down into the water. Uh, you want kind of warm water. Stir vigorously. All right, we can start seeing that it's really starting to get mixed down in there. That looks good. This is going to just be our pirate booty treasure. I'm going to stir and start pouring as I go. That way we get as much gold in there as possible. I want to bring the water up to almost, I want to say about two milliliters, millimeters from the surface of this cup. That is going to give us the space to be able to screw this in um, and uh, not have a big giant bubble. You What you want to kind of avoid is having a big old bubble down in there. Now I can see I can spy with my little eye that there's quite a bit of glitter in here con compared to how much water there is. So I'm not going to worry about, sometimes what I do is, if you saw have seen on my other um, storyboards, is I go in with this and I use this to squeeze and suck out some of the water and then add more of the glitter water. Um, that would be, I would do that if there's not enough glitter. But I can see that there's a lot of glitter here that will eventually make its way to, down to the other side. And I can see also, it's hard to see from this camera angle, um, but I can also see that there's a lot of glitter down in here. So this is a really good mix. Um, it's a bright, nice yellow gold um, for this pirate ship themed type cup. Um, this is going to be really fun. So I'm going to suit up and we're going to start working with our epoxy. All right, we've got our mask on and we've got our epoxy mixed. I am just taking this and putting this epoxy on this outside rim. This is going to seal it down and give it that nice connection. And basically make it waterproof for when we fit, flip the cup over. Um, I'm also, even though this is going to go down in the water, it's worth trying this. 
um, I'm going to put this inside all over the threads of the uh, screw down bottom. That's probably with the water touching it, it's not really going to um, cure up as well, but it might help hold it in place a little bit. Um, I am prepared for um, some epoxy to scoop out, sweep out of this side, seep out of the side of this when I screw this down. Um, so I have a paper towel ready to go. Uh, we're just going to sit this on and just gently, 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 but thoroughly uh, squish that down. Perfect. Okay. And then we're going to wipe that epoxy off that's squishing out. And we're going to let this sit for three days before we do any more work on this. I will babysit this for a little while. As you, as you see, there's a little bit more epoxy. It's kind of working its way out. Um, it does kind of seep over the next couple hours. So I will just um, grab and just kind of keep an eye on these little spots where the epoxy squishes out so we don't end up with bubbles. We're going to cover this part anyway eventually, uh, just the very bottom rim, so it won't matter if these ridges are there. I'm just, I babysit my cups regardless. So there we go. We've got that bottom set and uh, <laughs> I put a little too much epoxy. It's really squir squirting out there. Um, we've got our bottom set, and it looks beautiful, and I'm super excited about this cup. Um, we'll be back. Okay, so now I'm just going to basically kind of tap the glitter down and make sure it's nice and flat. Um, this is going to, again, make it very easy to um, cover and coat this uh, once this is adhered. I'm going to give it about nine hours to cure. Um, and because I'm going to leave this one overnight, normally you just need about five hours, uh, but it'll probably sit well, it'll be more than nine hours because it'll sit overnight. And tomorrow I will come and add the next coat of epoxy over the top of this, really seal this down in there, and then we'll just keep adding a couple of more layers of light epoxy. All right, so I'm going to keep doing the same process, just patting down the glitter all the way around. Um, and tomorrow we'll be back to epoxy. All right, guys, see you soon. All right, I just wanted to jump back on. I've got it all patted down nice and smooth. I realize that some people may be viewing this tutorial and it's the first the tutorial they've seen um, of a tumbler done with epoxy and they don't know uh, the, the ropes yet. Um, we've got electrical tape down, taping off the edges. Um, here, so before that epoxy cures, right away, so I just finished tapping, it has been about 40 seconds, and I um, am now going to be removing that tape immediately, because if that epoxy that kind of went up and over the edge of that tape cures down, it's going to leave a very rough edge, and it's going to give you problems down the road. So we're pulling that tape right away, so that it gives us, you can see it's going to give us a nice clean line. on the cup Boop. all right so now this cup we're going to just let it go it's going to do its thing tonight and uh we'll be back with you guys uh tomorrow for all the next steps all right guys we're not on a tripod or anything but i am going to show you the change um i'm probably gonna spill water everywhere ah! oh man and i overfilled it but there it comes how fun is that? It instantly changes. Um, I could shake it up a little bit. I don't want to, but you can see the stormy sea there. There's the Ted dead men tail, no tails. The side's going to have the boat. Let me, I'm going to pour out a little water. <laughs> this is a live crazy pants move because this is like super hot water. Okay. We poured a little water out. Now let's see if we can put the lid on, seal it up. Shake it about. Oh, hold that seal. Shake it about just so we can, just like somebody would be swirling their coffee. And show it off. 
take a sip of the coffee. Ooh, I'm, I'm afraid of tipping it. Here, we'll tip it into the cup. So if it goes, if it goes everywhere. But how fun is that? And there you go. You see the, the swirl of the pattern. You've got the dead men tells no tails. Okay, so what we learned from this one is use just a little bit less glitter so it doesn't clog up your scene. I just got a little heavy handed. There's our boat. He's really, really cool. I'm not gonna uh, try to shake it up and I'll come right back. All right, there you can see the boat. Super fun. That black powder just revealed the whole scene. Again, like I said, my only downside would be that I added a little too much glitter because I got a little excited because I love glitter. Um, but uh, like I said, my nanny already has claims on this cup. She thinks it's rad even though it's got a lot of glitter in it. So we can shake it up. Dead Man Tell No Tales. It's just a fun cup regardless. Um, I'm going to show you one more cup that I've done with the thermochromatic powder. Oh, farts. And of course it has water in it because I, I just showed it in my...